Adventure games are one of the older video game genres that was still have in the market and encompasses a lot of video games under its wings. The genres most often mix with other game genres. Most of them are action adventure games focusing more on the balance between exploration and combat like Tomb Raider, while others stay truthful to the original definition of an adventure game like Life is Strange where they emphasize their narrative experience with puzzle solving mixed in it, which is also tied back to the game's narrative. There is also a hefty amount of adventure games where they solely focus on its narrative, such as Telltale's very famous The Walking Dead episode game adaptation, or the renowned Detroit Become Human that is most praised by how the game's choices actually affect the entire story rather than giving players the illusion of choice. Some adventure games omit their narratives entirely and only retain the puzzle solving section. Limbo and its successor, Inside, is a puzzle platformer adventure game that gives very minimal narrative and focuses more on the various environmental puzzles that you need to solve in order to make progress. Limbo is also considered to be the first game to attempt to mix the horror genre with a platformer. Together with its astounding graphical and audio representation, makes it one of the innovative video games that we have in the market. More games will then follow suit with this idea, which gave birth to Little Nightmares. A game that essentially doesn't have a coherent way of telling you its story and is full of puzzles to solve in order to reach the end of the game, all the while avoiding your untimely demise to the various creatures that are present in the game. So everyone, join me as we explore these fantastic bad dreams of Little Nightmares. Creepiness, tension, and confusion. These are probably the three things that I have felt during my entire playtime of Little Nightmares. Having no context as to why you are exploring the place you are in, there is now this constant bugging idea in your mind as to what's going on and what creatures can kill you at any moment. Top it all off with its ambience and general dark places will surely make you feel that there's always something lurking in the distance, hidden away in the shadows waiting to pounce on you. Little Nightmares is a charming little horror adventure game that is beloved by many. We've seen it played by a bunch of YouTubers back when it was first released and gave birth to two other games in the following years due to its popularity. And it does deserve it. It's a pretty unique game and a real fresh take on the horror genre by focusing more on exploration and puzzle solving, but not so much that it becomes an entirely different genre than what it actually is. The game is developed by Tarshir Studios, a studio that developed DLCs for Little Big Planet. Little Nightmares is their very first own intellectual property, which they announced on May 2014 as Hunger, but was later rebranded to Little Nightmares and was finally released in 2017. Since then, it has been showered with love, enough for the game to spawn two prequels in 2019 and 2020. While Little Nightmares is a horror game, it doesn't contain a lot of jump scares unlike what you would expect from most of the horror games that was released in this era. Rather than giving you a heart attack every 5 seconds, the game instead presents you with puzzles to solve all the while absorbing the creepiness and unnerving nature of the world that you're in, making you feel tense as you find your way out of these rooms that are obviously too big for you. The game is going for a what the fuck is this kind of vibe rather than mp3 files that will surprise you from time to time, and it actually works. As mentioned earlier, the game plays out more like a puzzle platformer rather than a horror game. The puzzles are quite genius in design and can really make you feel that you've accomplished something once you solve them. They require throwing stuff, carrying stuff, climbing stuff, basically just interacting with everything that you see that are interactable. There are also some platforming puzzles throughout the game and it's never a dull moment as you get chased by something for the most part during the segments. The game is split into 5 chapters, each chapter representing the areas of the place that you are in and will end with you escaping whatever hellhole you are in. As you play through each chapter, hence explore the areas, you get to see a lot of things that can give you clues as to where you actually are, which creates even more questions than it gives answers. The game is also quite difficult considering the fact that there are no tutorials for you to read through as you start the game, nor text clues. In fact, no text will appear throughout both the base campaign and the DLC campaign aside from hints if the game feels like you're stuck. And obviously the pause menu. The platforming puzzles can especially be quite difficult for players that are not used to platforming as the characters that you're playing as aren't the easiest to control. 
The game is really short, clocking in at around 3 hours to finish the base story campaign without looking for secrets and collectibles, and around 4 hours or so to finish the DLC story campaign. Your playtime will increase if you decide to hunt for all the collectibles in the game, but not by that much since the game will tell you how many collectibles there are per chapter and will tell you how many you have already collected out of them. The game is already 4 years old so I'm pretty sure most of you have already seen its gameplay from various YouTubers already, but if you still haven't and want to try the game out, the link for the game's Steam Store page will be in the description as always. I really recommend the game for people that loves to solve puzzles and do some platforming all the while absorbing the really disturbing nature of a game's world and environment. If you want a straightforward, digestible story however, you may want to stay away from this game as it will only leave you disappointed in that aspect. If you want to know more about the game, then stay for a little longer as we dive deeper. Little Nightmare's story is pretty vague at best. With no context for you to work with other than a nightmare cutscene at the beginning of the game, you are figuratively and literally in the dark as to what is happening in the world that this game is set in. The basic premise, without going into major spoilers, is you need to skip the place that you're in, called the Maw, a place that is designed for much larger inhabitants as evidenced by the giant furniture and the giant grotesque figures that seem to work in this place, namely the janitor and the twin chefs. However, while the mall is indeed built for large creatures, it is interesting to note of some few passages that are accessible by smaller creatures, including the padlocks that you can unlock or small grids to pass through walls, as well as miniature ladders. The mall functions as both a resort for the wealthy and elite, but also serves as a prison for children. These children are carefully nurtured while they're still infants, but when they grow up, they get shoved into cages and cooked up by the twin chefs to be served to the guests the elite and wealthy that I've mentioned two sentences ago. Most of this information, especially information about the world outside the mall, is scarcely available in the other medium that could be an entire video of its own. Long story short, the mall is a hellhole that no child would want to be in. You play as Six, a nine-year-old girl in a yellow raincoat that has just woken up from a nightmare of a woman resembling a geisha. From here on out, you need to solve puzzles and find innovative ways to get around the mall. Six can be described as an anti-hero, she doesn't seem to care about saving other children trapped in the mall, and will find ways to escape all by herself without the help of anyone. A very stark contrast from the runaway kid in the DLC, where he enlists the help of even tinier creatures than him and Six called gnomes to solve puzzles and get through each area. No reasons were given as to why Six is here, what her connection is to the geisha, or why she had jumped of her, nor why she needs to escape the mall. Well, I guess the escaping part is pretty self-explanatory, but there are no answers or reasons for the other two. Not directly given anyways. There are a lot of clues that you can gather from the final chapter that seems to tell who Six actually is, but since most of the things I can find on the internet about it are only fan theories, I'm not going to include them here. In the DLC, you play as the runaway kid, a child that is most likely on the menu for the guests. As usual, it is his objective to escape the mall so he doesn't end up in a guest's stomach and it is up to you to solve puzzles to get around the various areas that you will be going through. His story happens simultaneously with Six, and Little Nightmares actually make it so there are no continuity errors. Or at the very least, make sure that the areas that the runaway kid explores are not the same areas as Six's, so puzzles won't be the same, and you actually have different sets of puzzles to solve. This eliminates the thing I hate about video games that I discussed in my Resident Evil 2 remake review. Speaking of which, make sure to check that out by clicking the card in the upper right portion of the screen. Anyways, this DLC also gives a lot of clues about the Maw and the final boss and pretty much gives Little Nightmares a much more coherent storyline. While the game has a really vague story, its theme is pretty obvious. Little Nightmares has big themes surrounding hunger and eating. Considering the original title of the game is Hunger, as mentioned earlier, and most of the events that take place in the game involve eating. Children are literally getting prepared to become meals for the grotesque guests. In the DLC, we can even experience the preparation that the janitor does to these children before they reach the chefs, and it's just really creepy and disturbing. Those are pretty much the tidbits of story that I can impart to you all without diving into fan theories, media other than this game, and major spoilers regarding both the base game and the DLC. All the other shenanigans that happen in the game are best experienced firsthand, and finding some really neat clues about the story of the game it's really a joy to be lost in as you absorb the dread and creepiness of the mall itself as you explore its walls. 
However, this can be a turn for people that wants a story that's given to them directly and may find this game quite a bit lacking in the story department because of its non-existent dialogues and text. But if you love puzzles and don't mind the game's story being presented pretty vaguely through its environment, then you will like this game. It's also a game for people that like simple gameplay. Little Nightmares gameplay mostly consists of puzzle solving and platforming. Combat is non-existent and if you do need to, say, kill an enemy, it's still presented in the form of a puzzle. You never will have to do direct damage to the creatures that are trying to capture you. This only changed during the final bits of the DLC where you are required to use your flashlight to turn the specters into dust. But other than that instance, you never need to deal direct damage to anything. Puzzles usually involve flipping levers, pushing switches, and carrying around various objects and placing them in appropriate places. As you would expect since Six is a really small child, you will frequently find yourself looking for chairs or boxes to use as footing to reach these levers and switches. Six can also crouch down to slip through really tight gaps, encouraging you to explore and observe your surroundings as much as you can to find these paths. Little Nightmares also presents you with checkpoints. The checkpoint triggers when getting into new areas or when you've done a certain part of a puzzle in an area. Starting Chapter 2, you will be first introduced to an enemy, the janitor. The base game consists only of four enemies. The janitor, as mentioned earlier, the twin chefs, Count the Swan, the guest, and the final boss of the game. Aside from the last one, you can only avoid these enemies for the majority of the time and it's up to you to find out how. It can be through walking on cloth flying around the floor or perhaps going through tight squeezes where they can't reach you. Sometimes you just have to run away from them. All of these are really tense and it's quite horrifying to see these grotesque individuals chase you down to the ends of the earth just to capture you. Six also starts with a lighter that you can use to illuminate a small area around her. Fortunately though, it has infinite lighter fluid so you can pretty much turn it on indefinitely. It does automatically switch off when you're grabbing stuffs and ledges and you need to relight it again. However, aside from making you see the game in lighting up lanterns, it doesn't seem to have any other purposes. The runaway kid has the same mechanics as Six, although instead of a lighter, he gets a flashlight instead that illuminates dark areas so much better. His flashlight is also used for another mechanic unique only to his storyline in the DLC's final chapter. The runaway kid doesn't light lanterns and candles for his collectibles, he collects float sams instead, hidden away in special bottles. Both characters feel really stiff to control and I don't know why. It will take quite some getting used to before you can confidently turn 6 and the runaway kid with minimal effort. Otherwise, you will constantly find yourself bumping into walls or grabbing things that you thought you have already let go of. Overall, pretty simplistic gameplay. It's quite a bit repetitive but the interesting world that you will be traversing makes you forget that you're just doing the same things over and over again and you actually will look forward to seeing a similar yet different puzzle structure. This very simple gameplay is also well complemented by the game's visuals and soundtrack. This section will perhaps be the longest one of this video with how the game heavily relies on its visual aspects to convey its story and provide the creepy atmosphere that it has that immerses you in the game. Little Nightmares further solidifies the nightmares in its title by its unnerving yet stunning visual designs. The environment is mostly pitch black but the way things are designed is nice. Background stuffs and things that you can interact with have pretty consistent art designs so some of the puzzle elements are woven into the background itself. Everything in the game also look grimy and which further supports what little plot the game has and makes you cringe with all the disgusting things that you can find throughout the game. They're so well made. The ambient darkness also complements the grimy, dirty nature of everything in this game. It does get in the way sometimes and it is kind of hard to see where you're going from time to time but that very thing is what adds more to the tension of the game and I just really like it. Turning up the brightness in the in-game settings doesn't remove this darkness and it will just oversaturate the white colors of the game so you can cheat the system that way. Unlike in Dark Souls 2 where you can just crank up the brightness and torches becomes a useless addition to the game. Most of the background stuff are also designed in a way that tells your story. As I've mentioned earlier in the video, Little Nightmares doesn't display text during gameplay whatsoever so all you have to form a story and acquire tidbits of lore is through the visuals and the game really does provide in that aspect. 
There are a lot of paintings scattered in the final chapter that tells the story of the final boss and perhaps of Six as well. The twin chef's furniture are all conjoined together, suggesting that they might have been conjoined at birth. Speaking of the twin chefs, characters in this game are all very grotesque looking and actually just plain disgusting and terrifying which adds furthermore to the game's themes of hunger and eating. The twin chefs and the guests all look similar to pigs and the latter are so dehumanized despite being rich and elites that they want to eat anything that moves. They're pretty much the perfect representation of gluttony. One of the things I like about Little Nightmares is how it takes advantages of your controller's features specifically the vibrate feature. Play with the controller if you want the full experience of Little Nightmares because what the Shear Studios did with it is pretty amazing. Long story short, the vibration of your controller emulates heartbeats when you're nervous or scared and the PS4 controller and most probably any other compatible controllers with vibration perfectly emulates how it feels. This mostly happens when you're sneaking past by the janitor or the chefs and it's such a really nice feature that the Shear Studios added to the game. I freaking love it. The amount of noise that you make also translates to the intensity of your controller's vibration which immerses you more in the game's environment. Such attention to details is what made me love this game even more. And speaking of attention to detail, most lightweight stuff in the game have good physics that will roll over to the direction of where the mall is swaying which is pretty cool. This is not used for any puzzles though except for one portion of the DLC. Sound design for the game is really amazing as well as it translates to how gross and terrifying the enemies are in this game. The chefs, for example, squeal like a pig when they find you which makes you want to run away from them even more than you already do. The clicks on the wooden floors give so much tension especially when you're trying to snake past by the janitor. Not to mention the little vibrating action we just talked about earlier with the controller. On a similar note, the music score of the game fits its motif pretty well. All the music used in the game gives this mysterious, unnerving vibe and some of the instruments used make some parts of the music play diegetic noises that you can find in the mall like chairs being dragged, ship horns, and door creaks among other examples. One soundtrack titled A Feeling for Meat emulates foot stomping and the gritty synth that it has really makes your blood pumping like crazy as it makes you frantic. Meanwhile, much of the guests provides chain cackling, perfectly symbolizing how the guests of the mall get inside. And as a last example, let's listen to six second theme where you can hear ominous hums in the background. Remember, Six is not a hero. She will do whatever she needs to do in order to survive, even if it means killing innocent victims. And this theme of hers perfectly captures her personality. You will rarely notice the soundtracks playing throughout the game as they blend in so perfectly well with what's happening, but it is definitely noticeable and makes a stark contrast when it's just dead silent, which is just really amazing. The game runs fine on my pretty ancient computer. It actually defaulted into ultra settings which doesn't happen quite often for me considering my computer specs. Again, I will be posting my system in the description below so you can have some references on what kind of ancient machine I'm running this game on. Anyways, the game pretty much plays out smoothly in the base game. I only had frame drops in a couple of areas and they only lasted for mere seconds. But that's only talking about the base game. Because the DLC, oh boy, it goes downhill from there. Let's get this thing out of the way. The DLC is not the most optimized thing in the world. I've been seeing a lot of people experiencing crashes on the base game as well when I did my research on this phenomenon, but I only experienced crashes on the DLC so I am only going to base this judgment on that. Dying in certain parts of the DLC will crash your game, showing an error message from Little Nightmares Game Engine and Rule Engine 4. The first time this happened to me, I thought it was because my antivirus was scanning in the background and hugging all my resources. The DLC also felt a bit laggy to me as well which further made me believe that it was the antivirus fault. 
turns out a lot of people have been experiencing this issue and it still was happening to me even when the scan was complete. From what I can gather, there seems to be some error regarding the runaway kid's model when it gets grabbed by the hands from below the water. Since he's in an awkward position or in a position that the game isn't expecting him to be, the game doesn't know how to handle it behind the scenes and thus it crushes. Apparently, this crash has been in the game since the DLC's release, but considering that Little Nightmares 2 has already been released, I don't think the devs are planning on fixing this issue. One of the more obvious problems is how short the game is. I wouldn't say that it's not worth the full price, but I would definitely recommend getting the game when it goes on sale, especially for those of you that are on a tight budget like me. The fact that the three chapters of The Runaway Kid are three separate DLCs is kind of a bummer as well and makes Little Nightmares a bit of a DLC sinkhole. It's not that bad but each chapter lasts for like an hour or so and you have to pay for it just to get more context about the mall and the entirety of the game's story. It's not that great of a deal. That's pretty much all I can say regarding the game's problems. The annoying crash in the DLCs are by far the worst offender and it's kind of a bummer that it would seemingly be there for the rest of the game's lifetime. Other than that though, the problems that I have listed are purely subjective and will probably not affect your enjoyment of the game. Little Nightmares is a really unique horror experience. Its emphasis on puzzle solving and platforming is a really rare sight these days especially in the horror genre. Just like Limbo and Inside, Little Nightmares perfectly shows that for a game to be unnerving and scary, it doesn't need a lot of ear-piercing noises. Sometimes, all you have to do is make an atmospheric game world and let it become the scare. <laughs>